Responding to climate change is extremely urgent. It has to happen in this generation by you, by me, and by all of us. Climate disasters in Vietnam are already causing death and destruction, and the risks are increasing fast. Growing greenhouse gas emissions in Vietnam that cause global warming are possibly even causing more losses because of local pollution. I will tell you some good news. Vietnam can reduce its future emissions, and that will have many benefits. And I will show you that Vietnam must reduce the effects of climate change. Now, I will start with the bad news. Statistics of the effect of climate extremes show Vietnam as the seventh most affected country in the world, according to, the, to this index of death and economic loss. Now, these are data for the past 20 years, and some may say, nah, these are just normal disasters. They do not prove that climate change is happening. Sure. But climate change is happening, and it is increasing these risks. I will show you two charts of Jim Hansen, who is also known as a grandfather of climate science, and he is a grandfather concerned about the future of his grandchildren. Now, these charts show that the surface temperature of the Earth is already warmer by one degree Celsius. Now, the agreement reached in Paris, December last year, at the UN Conference of Parties to the Framework Convention on Climate Change, agreed to stay well below 2 degrees Celsius average global warming, and preferably no more than 1.5 degrees. So we are already incredibly close. And therefore it is us, this pre present generation, who must drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions to prevent what is known as dangerous climate change. Last year, 2015, was the warmest year ever measured. 2016 is on track of becoming even warmer. Now, there was snow in Ngayan last year for the first time in living memory. Now, that snow does not mean that the Earth is not warming because it is warming. But it shows that there are extreme climates happening and that there is average global warming. It was extremely cold in Paris for the time of year when we were negotiating global warming. And afterwards, I visited the Netherlands where I grew up and where it was so warm that the trees had started to blossom as if it was spring instead of winter. So, climate change is changing seasons, extremes everywhere. Extreme temperatures, extreme floods, extreme storms and extreme droughts. It is the worst ever drought and saline water intrusion in the Mekong Delta right now. The Central Highlands and the South Central Coast region are suffering from extreme drought as well. Now these extremes are associated with what is known as El Nino. That's a natural climate cycle that is happening in a world that is already warmer because of climate change. The problems of salt and drought in the Mekong Delta are also being made worse. Worse because groundwater extraction makes the whole delta actually go down faster than sea level is rising. Canals have been dug, increasing drainage and drought risks. Dikes have been built, in preventing freshwater flooding during the wet season. And dams upstream are reducing the overall river flow. And all of that combined is tragic. Tragic for farmers, for households, for businesses in the delta. However, if nothing happens, it will be worse during the next strong El Nino in 5, 10, 20 years from now. Now, do you remember the historic floods in the Mekong Delta in 2011, 2001, 2000? Every single one of those three years, hundreds of people died, especially children drowned. There are farmers suffering from drought right now, and they may suffer from floods like this later this year. Who in this audience remembers Typhoon Linda in 1997, which caused three 
thousand people dead or missing, and more than 100,000 homes destroyed in the Mekong Delta. Elsewhere in Vietnam, in the mountainous regions, there are flash flood risks threatening agriculture, homes, whole communities, and this is killing people every year in Vietnam. Cities are threatened with extreme rainfall and floods. This image is in front of my office in 2009 when, Viet, uh, when Hanoi was suffering severe inundation. 2008, correction. 72 Lee Tung Kiet Street, 31st of October. I was lucky because my boss took the four-wheel drive and I could hitch a lift going home. Ho Chi Minh City is suffering from floods and hundreds of millions of dollars of losses every year. These extremes are not necessarily um, all caused by climate change, but these are getting worse, likely to be worse. And climate science is talking about the new normal. The likelihood that another extreme will hit another region in Vietnam anytime soon is extremely high, and Vietnamese scientists are predicting more climate change. They have observed temperatures have risen over the period 1961 to 2010, and they are predicting that this warming will be particularly severe through the 21st century in the north of the country, but occurring everywhere. The north so a reduction in rainfall, and the south, an increase. The number of consecutive dry days in the north increased and in the south decreased. The likelihood that this continues is very high, with more extreme rainfall expected in the south, as well as the far north of the country through this century. And the frequency of droughts will increase in most climate zones of Vietnam. Typhoon frequency has decreased in the past few decades, but intensity has increased. This trend is also predicted to continue. More super typhoons will have happened by the end of the 21st century. Who remembers Typhoon Ketsana in 2009, devastating the central region? This slide shows inundation of Hoi An City after the typhoon. Extreme sea levels have increased measurably, combining high tides with storms. Scientists predict a one meter mean sea level rise by the end of the century. And then there are other scientists. New science suggests that this sea level rise will be much more, not very long after that. Now, all of this means that climate change is happening, climate extremes are happening, death and destruction has been caused, risks are increasing. We must respond right now. That was the bad news. Now I have worse news for you. Global climate change is caused especially by burning fossil fuels. Coal, gas, and petrol and diesel. It means that coal is particularly bad for climate change. And this is being increased in Vietnam. Coal mining rips up landscapes. In Quang Ninh, here on the picture, in 2015, heavy rains caused flooding of mines, rupture of a mine waste facility, and it destroyed homes, killed people. Coal mining causes pollutants affecting crops, reducing farmers' incomes. Some pollutants go into rice grains, poisoning consumers, you. Coal transport causes poisonous dust along the way. And then, then this coal is used. It is used in particular in electricity production. The coal-fired power plant in Vinh Tan, in Vinh Tuan province, has been built recently and caused so much pollution that it resulted in major protests last year, people blocking the highway. The amount of waste produced by this power plant is massive and there is no good solution for this yet. Nevertheless, the power complex is expanding in coming years, and many more of those coal-fired power plants are being built in Vietnam or planned. Now, that means Vietnam is planning for a coal-dependent future 
for more than half of its total power production in decades to come. If all those power plants would be built in Vietnam, the resulting additional air pollution in Vietnam will also cross its borders. It will go outside the country. And if all those power plants would be built, this would result, this air pollution would result in an additional 21,000 premature deaths per year by 2030 compared to 2011. This is a lot more than the deaths of super typhoons and super floods. It is also almost double the number of traffic casualties per year on Vietnam's roads. I would wager that Vietnam must stop planning for coal. It must reduce its future by putting a price on carbon instead of subsidizing the use of coal. Now, I do have some good news for you. Vietnam has many islands and a long coastline, and it is possible to build a lot of windmills, generating wind power. It is also reduce, uh, receiving a lot of sunshine. This means it has a massive potential for solar energy. Vietnam is behind the international trend of building renewable energy-based power plants, but it can catch up fast because solar and wind are actually quite cheap to build. They can be built very fast, responding to rising demands. They have almost no negative impact. And they can support the local domestic industry and green and clean jobs. Now, the reason why this is not yet happening is because it looks as if coal is cheap. But solar and wind energy is already cheaper if you include all the costs, the real costs, of coal power, like paying hospital bills, state cleaning up, and reduced incomes, and your subsidy to building coal power plants and to building transport infrastructure for coal. Now, renewable energy has other advantages. You can build solar power on rooftops, reducing electricity bills of businesses and households. Water can be heated by, up by the sun. Solar power can also help create affordable power for remote communities and islands that are difficult to connect to the national power grid. Agricultural residues can be used for cooking and for heating in industry. And finally, the transport infrastructure. Electric transport is developing very fast. You can suddenly see motorbikes everywhere around you. Now we want these electric motorbikes, their batteries to be charged with solar power. This technology is developing so fast that with the right policies in Vietnam, a transition from internal combustion engines running on petrol or diesel to electric motors is possible, also for buses and cars, also in Vietnam. Just imagine how much cleaner the air in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City would be. So I would argue that greenhouse gas emissions reduction is very possible in Vietnam and it has many additional benefits. But there is one big challenge that remains. Climate stresses and shocks will continue to increase even if the world achieves no more than one and a half or two degrees warming. So therefore, we must adapt to the effects of climate change. That can be done in many different ways, in all localities and sectors. For example, the chart on the screen proposes to divide the Mekong Delta in three zones. A coastal zone with brackish water and salt-tolerant agriculture, aquaculture. A more inland zone with a lot of good, high-yielding rice and fruit. And a core zone with controlled freshwater flooding. Now, this zoning reduces exposure to certain extremes and stresses. It also reduces vulnerabilities because in each zone, specialized, adapted livelihoods and businesses can develop. If we want to work and live with nature, with saline water intrusion, with storms, floods and droughts, we must, for example, plant mangrove forests to protect the coasts. We can also look at the most vulnerable communities and households and move them to safer places, which is already happening in Vietnam. Dikes can be reinforced. And this slide shows you that schools and homes can be made flood and storm resistant. 
This slide represents years of experience in central Vietnam of a number of organizations. The drought, coping with the drought is possible by building water storage. Now, there are already situations as well where certain losses and damages are unavoidable. The government is supporting people in the central highlands and in the Mekong Delta, southeast central coast right now, which is great. Nevertheless, the insurance industry can be developed in order to contribute, help coping with the unavoidable losses of global climate change. Finally, I worked here in Hanoi at 72 Lee Tung Kiat Street. And in that office, we ran a small campaign, a mini campaign, putting up secretly some posters with cryptic and mysterious texts in order to get our colleagues to think about climate change, like the one here on the screen. We tried to say, okay, it's very nice, tropical beaches with palm trees, penguins are very cute. However, if the climate in Antarctica would be tropical, then the penguins might be extinct because of overheating. And palm trees, they do not provide much shade. The water level, the seawater level, would have risen massively because mountains of ice on the South Pole would have melted. And they would be flooding with meters of water all the deltas and cities of Vietnam. Now, this may only happen in a century or two, perhaps three. But prevention is only possible in this generation. Reducing greenhouse gas emissions by you and me and all of us now. So I think it's high time to act. Thank you very much.